Hey everybody, it's Riker Rider, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. We're back in Mayfield to take on Zeeg at the last city, last Signet Sphere. Well, now that we've done all the side quests, we can safely go up because, well, there's nothing left for us to do here. Let's go. Let's save the world and... <coughs> Excuse me. Again, probably should have waited before I had lunch, but whatever. We're going to go try to save the world from Z. Had no idea the tower at Mayfield was this tall. All right, anything past this, anything starting here on, this, any items you pick up here are past the point of no return. And there are save points after the point of no return. So if you overwrite your save, you won't be able to do anything back on the other world, which is why I recommended making a separate save. Well, this is it. Here's the Signet Sphere room, and it appears that we've beaten Zeke to uh, the Signet Sphere. We have to stop him here, or the world's done. Or we can fight the god itself. That's right, we don't have a choice, we have to. Wait, what? How are you here? Then what was that before if you weren't hiding? That's not funny. That's a problem. Uh-oh. That's it. There's the last signet. Now it's only a matter of time before the 108th species is born and, well, the creator regenerates well, not really regenerates the world, it's more like starts the world anew. That's right, Dart. Because the moon hasn't obtained Shauna yet, we can go you know what we can do? We can actually go there and try to stop it. That's really all we can do. Yes, the last half of the uh, the last eighth of the game, which is the last half of the fourth disc is on the freaking moon! Gee, how many games have done this? Final Fantasy IV was probably the most infamous example. But yeah. I'm gonna be quiet for this one, because this is a big scene.
And this is exactly the reason why, even though you are flying on the wings of Savan, this is still a point of no return, because they crash. And all those little things that popped out of the out of the moon once it settled on top of the divine tree, those are all barrages. So apparently the divine tree is what pollinates the moon and allows the earth to happen. There's got to be some way for us to stop it. We're, but we are right underneath the moon, so all we have to do is uh, um, climb the divine tree, and that's where we are. You never really get to hear this track clearly in the game because of all the background noise. But if you can find this track on the uh, on the um, unreleased track CD that was released in uh, 2002 for this game. Either that or you can find the track online. It's a beautiful track. Now keep your eyes peeled, because there's some really well-hidden treasure around here. Like the second phoenix plume. It's not even in the treasure chest. There's just this little glint. Now there's not really too much to the divine tree. There's only a couple of items, and there's... Uh, and the path up there, I don't think, ever branches. It's just straightforward. Apparently so. It's never really explained where in the world the Divine Tree is, but I'm guessing it's somewhere in the, uh, in the Death Frontier area. Unfortunately, up the Divine Tree, there are enemies, and some of them are rather dangerous. What do we have here? It looks like a couple manticores. You'll want to take these guys out fairly quickly. Now, they have high defenses across the board. And, uh, what else do they do? Oh, they have an attack that can petrify you. They have a grand total of 960 HP. I brought Kongol in to, uh, to try to at least get his first edition done by the time the game's over. Maybe get him one more uh, Dragoon level to start using his, uh, what's it, his, you know, basically just to keep him in there lo uh, longer. Did Rose just get dispirited? That attack's not on my list. I hope Rose didn't get dispirited, because I don't think I have a way to cure that except by transformation. And finally, now that we've mastered Hardblade and all of her additions, Rose has learned the Demon's Dance edition, which is her final. If you get this up to max, it can just become ungodly powerful. Now, did Rose get dispirited? No, she did not. Let's put her on that new edition. Like all final editions except Kongles, it's eight hits. And as you get into the parts of the Divine Tree that are more of a side view as opposed to a view from behind the party, you can see just how many barrages are around here.
we got some new enemies here too. I believe we have pot bellies. Oh, mountain apes. Huh. But the one I want to focus on in the back is the cute cat. The uh, cute cat has a special ability that can cause instant death to a party member. And that can get kind of irksome. And get this bitch out of here. Wow, my addition timing is late today. I think I'm going to try to psych bomb these guys out of here. Hopefully I get enough damage in on them, because they have, uh... Actually, it shouldn't be that big a deal, because these guys have low magic defense. Only 60. Yeah, that's more than enough. Man, I wish you could get this kind of experience before the point of no return, but unfortunately that's not possible. And here's another new enemy, the slug. They can use pellets and physical attacks, that's about it. Early? Boy, I guess I just shouldn't be recording this today, because apparently I just fail at additions. Your damage isn't that bad. Yeah, they're just... Resilient attackers. <laughs> so what does everybody think of Pokemon Conquest? Because that's what I've been doing of late. And I think the game's amazing. Sure, the campaign itself only lasts like 8 to 10 hours, but... There's so many different stories after that that all vary in difficulty that the game just keeps you busy for so long, and I just love the concept, story-wise. Not having any luck with Rose's final edition here. I'm, I want to show the timing off, and I may just put my Ultimate War God back, on, uh, back into effect. I don't want to do that, though, because it's kind of cheap, and you really shouldn't have one. Right, we can head closer to, uh... Yeah, unfortunately it won't take us all the way to the top, but it'll take us pretty close. There's a lot of wind in that tunnel. Especially if it could lift Conkle. Now one nice thing about this, about going through that uh, life stream, if you will, is when you go through it, uh, all of your health will get restored. You're morbid, Rose, although I guess it's true. Oh, hi there, Maru. What's that thing? Must have. That's a new... That's a new subspecies not found anywhere on Endiness, so it's apparently just hatched from its fruit.
back here we get the white silver dragoon armor for Miranda. That's a, a healing point, but you won't need it because you were just healed fully. The vine tree isn't a huge area, but it's big enough. But it takes enough time to get through. What's this? Almost skipped over this. I think this is just another fruit. Yeah. We're gonna stop that though, Rose. Okay, um, right up here, there's a uh, there's a save point if you need it. If you go off to the uh, left, or not the left, if you go off to the right. Sorry, I'm I must be looking at the map from a different angle or something. Either that, or I'm just tired. And you know, I think this is a good place to cut the video off anyway, because we're gonna have to fight a boss shortly after the save point. So I need to rearrange my setup a little bit for this next fight, which I'll get to next time on Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. See ya, everybody!